So up next is the phosphate test. I've already pre-filled my cuvette. This one is uh, similar to the alkalinity test. So in case you skip past that part and came right to this test, I like to use a turkey baster. Take the needle off. You can get these at the dollar store. Um, I don't go by the graduations on here, but at least it allows you to get a nice controlled water sample rather than the little droppers and stuff. And uh, fill up your vial until the belly is on the 10 milliliter mark. That's called the meniscus. So you want the belly of the meniscus right there. So for marine tanks, there's two different phosphate checkers you can use. There's the phosphate low range, which is this one. See, there we go. Or there's the phosphate ultra low range, which is this one. And sometimes it's confusing. It's like, which one do I buy? Which one do I want to get? The only difference between these two is the accuracy. This one is accurate for 0.04 ppm plus or minus. This one is accurate for 0.02 ppm plus or minus. So depending on how tight uh, you want to run your phosphate, that will determine which checker you want to get. And they are pretty much the same price, so the ultra low range one is usually the one that people get anyway. And if you notice, it says marine line on the top there. That gives you the clue that these are the ones that are used for saltwater tanks. Hannah does make other checkers, and they're not for saltwater at all. This one happens to be for saltwater also, but just keep that in mind when you're buying all these weird checkers for different things. Look for this marine line here, and that'll at least let you know for sure this will be good for saltwater tanks. But uh, that's the difference between the two checkers. So if you have the regular low range checker, don't worry, it'll still work okay. But just know that if you run a low range of phosphate, you may read zero a lot because it's only good for 0 0.04 ppm range plus or minus. So the ultra low range is usually the ones people have for SPS tanks. Um, to do this test, it's very similar to the alkalinity test, but instead of a liquid reagent, it gives you a uh, it's not really a powder, it's more like little granules, but uh, it does use one reagent. So I've got my vial filled here, and you want to clean all the smudges off your vial, all your fingerprints, and if you have a really scratched up vial, I suggest getting a new one. And I like to keep my 10 milliliter mark in the front. You don't have to, but that's just what I like to do. That way I know which way it is. You can put the 10 milliliter in the back if you want or, or whatever you want to do. I just do that so I know it's in the same spot every time. Does it really matter that much? I don't think so, but it's just a way to be uh, more sure, I guess. So there's the C1. We're going to press our button. The lines are flashing. And notice it's taking a while. I mentioned this earlier during the alkalinity test. See how it keeps flashing and flashing and flashing and you're like, I got things to do. Let's do this. Hold that button in. Turn it off. See how she turns off? You don't even have to take that out. See one will pop up again. It should be a little quicker this time. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But there's a little uh, photo eye in there so if something some dirt or something gets in between that photo eye and the vial it'll pull up an error code down here and let you know but for some reason there there it is for some reason these things sometimes they take that long sometimes it's you know it seems like it's instant so just know that it works as long as the c2 comes up like that so now we're going to put our reagent in And like I said in the calcium uh, tester section, I like to keep a kid's pair of scissors in these test kits with these things just so I know I have scissors in here. I have three uh, girls, they're all older teenagers now, but when I buy scissors, I can buy a hundred pair and all hundred will disappear on me. So I keep my own in here. <laughs> That's just me. Um, you do you. I guess this one's sort of like a powder. It's almost like, um, I don't know, fine grade salt. Now 
and we're going to shake it up. So I'm going to wipe my smudges off again. I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see it. But I'm just wiping my smudges off my vial. So the only difference between this one and the alkalinity one at this point is you're going to hold the button in and it's going to do a countdown. It's going to do a three minute countdown. So go do what you got to do for three minutes when you're doing this. Uh, come back, set a timer, whatever you got to do. Um, and you come back and it'll tell you your reading. Okay, we're counting down from five. Let's see what our reading is. Ooh, that's pretty high for this tank, 0 0.09. But the coral in there would like it. So I like to keep my tanks around 0 0.04 for SPS, but this tank happens to be a mixed tank and it has LPS and SPS in it. So that's as high as I want to go. I don't want to go much higher than that. So I'm gonna keep an eye on these phosphates. Okay, let's say when you come back, you forgot about this and it timed out and it turned itself off. And you're like, crap. I don't want to waste more reagent. Don't worry, you don't have to. Just take out the vial. You can shake it up if you want. Just let it sit for the air bubbles. Uh, get another vial and just fill it up with 10 milliliter of tank water for your C1. And there's just a little bit of a difference this time. Now it's saying C2. You don't have to hold it in this time. Just press the button and it'll immediately count it. Just like that. And the number can be a little bit different too. Like this time it says 0 .08. The accuracy of this is 0 .02 uh, parts per million either way, plus or minus. So that at least it gives you a general range. And that's the phosphate check. All right. Time for the nitrate test. Now this particular one is the nitrate high range. I do not suggest buying the nitrate ultra low range because that one does not uh, go up high enough as far as the reading. And also it has a few different reagents and it's way more complicated than using this. So if you're gonna get the nitrate tester, I suggest getting the nitrate high range one, which is this one. This one just uses one reagent just like the phosphate checker. Uh, it is a powder though on this one, so it's a little bit more difficult to get it all down in the corner, but not impossible. So I got my 10 milliliters of tank water. This one does fill it up with tank water to 10 milliliter. You want your belly of your meniscus on your line. Clean off all your smudges. That's an important part when using these testers. This thing uses a little photo eye in there. And if it sees smudges on there, it's going to affect your reading. We're going to turn it on. It says C1. I'm going to hit the button. Now it's going to establish a zero mark. And as I said previously, if this thing keeps flashing like this a lot and you don't want to wait and keep waiting and keep waiting, just hold that button down and it'll turn it off. And then you can redo it. Sometimes it comes up a lot quicker than that. Just like that. Now it says C2. So this one, you got. I like to flick it down there, all the powder, get it down in the corner. So when we cut this, the powder isn't coming out, and you're wasting reagent, or you will get an inaccurate reading doing that. So you want to make sure you use all the reagent that you can in these little packets. See, this one is a powder. That's the only thing I don't like about this test kit, that it's a powder and not like little granules. 
it just makes it a little more difficult to get it out of the packet like this. A liquid would be really awesome if they could do that, but I'm sure there's a reason why they use this. We want to make sure we get all the reagent in there that we can. If there's any stuck in the corners, just tap it in there. And then you're going to shake this for two minutes. So set your favorite timer, play some music, do what you got to do. If you got a little magnetic stir, you probably could use that. But you want to shake this vigorously for two minutes. Okay, and I'm still shaking, and I got my favorite timer going. You can already see it starting to change color. Alexa, stop. So our two minutes are up. I'm going to wipe off all the smudges. similar to the phosphate checker you're gonna hold the button in and now it's gonna do a seven minute countdown so go do what you gotta do for seven minutes when you're doing this uh, set another timer to remind you if you have to because this does not have a, a beep on it this will just count down it'll, it'll show the number and then after so many minutes it'll shut itself off there's no alarm there's no nothing so set something to remind you if you walk away from this and we'll come back in a minute and see what our reading is. All right, and we're counting down from five. Let's see where the nitrate's at in this tank. 22.4. Not terrible. That's about as high as I want it to go in this tank. Uh, optimally, I'd like to see, I don't know, around 10 to 15. So it's not too bad. Uh, another water change will definitely cut it, cut it down. Uh, but I think I might stick a fuge on this tank. I don't have a, a refugium yet. Uh, my refugiums are just basically a grow light and some chato in a basket. I don't do anything fancy with all the, you know, high dollar equipment. I'm not really a tech junkie. I just get the tech to where it suits me best, uh, such as these checkers. The reason why I like these checkers uh, more than the, the ones that you gotta, you know, do all the drops and stuff is because it gives me a digital number on here. Uh, I'm getting older in years, I'm 43, so when I'm looking at colors, you know, like this, this does turn a color for this thing to see. And, you know, for instance, you know, you're trying to look at a chart and you're like, which orange is this thing? Is it 20, is it 40? I, I don't know. Then you pass it to somebody else to look and they tell you a number and then you're like, that's not it, give me that. That's what I started to go through. So I was like, you know what? I'll just go with these checkers. They get me close enough. They still are hobby grade testers, but I like them just for that fact. I ain't got to sit there and squint and decide, you know, what color orange is this. And uh, that's the nitrate checker. And now for some myths. The first myth is that you have to use the same cuvette for your C1 and your C2 on your tester. That's not necessarily true. You can use both cuvettes as long as they're both unscratched. The second myth is that HANA checkers are more reliable and more accurate than other test kits. That's not necessarily true. You'll have to verify on other test kits the accuracy and compare it to the HANA accuracy. The third myth is that HANA checkers are unreliable, such as this calcium test here. That's not necessarily true either. I find that people run into problems when they have expired reagents or they don't use the proper test water. This calcium tester requires distilled water instead of RODI water because you may have some impurities in your RODI water. I'm Reefer Matt. Thank you for watching and happy reefing.